Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we're going to talk about Niagara and exporting particle data to Blueprints in Unreal 4. Specifically, we're going to talk about how we can export this particle data based on collision. That way, we can utilize it in a Blueprint. So to get this started, I'm going to right click in my content browser and I'm going to create a Niagara emitter from an empty blank template. And we'll give it a name, NE, whatever you want to call it. And then we'll open it up. Now, before we can talk about exporting, I want to set some things up for demonstration. So in a minute update, we need to spawn something. So I'm going to add a spawn rate. I'm going to set this pretty low. So there's not too many to something like 0.3. And then in initialized particle, we want to change our color mode from unset to be random range. And then under color channel mode, we're going to change this to random individual channels. This way we get an array of different colors every time the particle spawns. Now the sprite size mode, we'll change that to uniform. And instead of 10, we'll make these a little bigger. So they will be 20. And now I want my particles to fall with gravity. So in particle update, I'm going to add gravity and you'll probably get this error, solve forces and velocity. Gravity force is dependent on this module. So we'll click fix issue and it should appear below gravity force. Now we want our particles to collide. So I'm going to add collision. So particle update, and we'll make sure that this is also above solve forces and velocity. And we'll just hit save because now I want to go and test to make sure that our collision is working correctly. So I'm going to minimize our emitter and I'm going to right click create Niagara system and we'll just name this correctly for good naming conventions. So it says NS and then we'll drag this out into the world so that we can see if the collision is working, wait for it. And that seems to be fine. So now we can go and talk about exporting. So I'm going to open up my Niagara system. And in here, we can either add this to particle spawn, or we can add this to particle update. I'm going to add mine to particle update. So I'm going to click on the plus icon and I'm looking for export and you should see export particle data to blueprint. Now, once we add this, there's quite a few things to talk about with this. So the condition to export, this is going to be why, when do I want to export data? And now based on that condition, we're going to export a vector, a vector and a float. Now these do have names. The first one's position, velocity, size, but we can export whatever we want as long as it's a vector, a vector or a float. Next we have export particle data interface. This is the how, how do you want to export this data? So callback handler parameter. This is saying, where do you want to send this export data? What do you want to receive this export data? And it's looking for an object like a blueprint. And then we have export GPU. You can think of this as optimization. So right now we have fixed size, so we can limit or increase how many calls we have. Now, instead of fixed size, we can also set this to per particle. So every particle that you spawn, it'll be that amount. So how do we use this now? So if we come back to condition to export, I want to base this on our collision, on our collision hits. So if we come to collision and we click on the view options, this drop down, we want to turn on parameter rights. And if we open that up and we scroll down, you should see this output collision collision valid. And this is a bolt. So this is what we want to use. So coming back to export particle data, we can change this condition to export to be collision valid. Now, if this didn't show up for you, it's probably because your export particle data isn't below collision. These need to be in the correct order of operation for you to get this collision valid. So now if the collision is valid, we're going to export a vector, a vector and a float. I'm going to leave this first one as the position. And then even though this says velocity, I want to export color. So I'm going to click on the drop down and I'm going to change this to a linear color. And then I'm going to change this linear color to be our particle color. And now the float to send, if you wanted to send the size, you could. So I'm going to change this float to be a vector 2D length, because that's how we measure the size of our particles, our sprites. And then this vector, I'm going to change this to be our sprite size. So based on this collision, if it's valid, we're going to export this data. But now we need to send it somewhere. So I'm going to come up to our user parameters and I'm going to create 
a new parameter based on an object. Now, when we come to that, I'm going to rename mine. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call mine BP callback. And then you'll see that there's nothing to put in here. You can't put anything in here. But in a little bit, we can set it through our blueprint. So if we come back to our export particle data and we look at our callback handler, where we want to send our export data, if we click on this drop down, now we can add that BP callback. And I'm just going to leave the allocation alone. So now, Let's go and take a look at setting this up with our blueprint. So I'm going to come to our content browser and I'm going to right click, I'm going to create a blueprint class from an actor and we'll call it BP, whatever you want to call it. And then we'll open it up. And now like usual, the first thing we want to do is add our Niagara system. So I'm going to add Niagara particle system. I'm going to leave the name as it is. Then in the details panel, the Niagara system asset, this is where we want to add the Niagara system that we just made. So in my case, it's NS underscore expo. And once you do that, you should see that your particle is working. So there it goes. So now that we have our blueprint, we still need to set that call back up. We still need to set up a relationship so that this export data can be sent to our blueprint. So we're going to set this BP callback. So I'm going to drag out our Niagara system and off of this, we're going to type in set and we're looking for set Niagara variable by string object. And in here, this is where we're going to add that user parameter. So I'm going to type in user dot BP callback or whatever you called it. And I'll just pull this up and we're going to base this on event begin play. And now we want to put something into this object. And in this case, we want a reference to this blueprint. So I'm going to drag off of here and I'm going to type in self, get a reference to self. So now on begin play, we're going to set this. And every time there's a collision, we're going to export this data to our BP callback, which is our blueprint. So we have all this set up now. Now, how do we get that collision information? How do we get it and use it? So in this case, it's based off of an interface function. So I'm going to come to class settings and in here, you're going to see interfaces, implemented interfaces. We want to add an existing one. So I'm going to click on add and we're looking for Niagara, Niagara particle callback handler. And once we add that, you're going to see that this little function just showed up under your interfaces. If we right click that, we can click on implement event. And now, Every time you collide, this event is going to be called. So you can already just drag off of this and do whatever you want. But in my case, I also want to get that data that we exported. I want to get these two vectors in this float. So off of data, I'm going to do a for each loop so that we can separate them all out independently. And then off of this array element, I'm going to break it. Specifically, I'm going to break basic particle data. And now you should notice that this says position, size, and velocity, just like in our Niagara system and our export data to blueprint. Position, size, velocity. So now I want to do some things with this. So off of the loop body, I'm going to print string and we'll just open this up so that we can see what's going on here. And in the in string, I'm going to put the position and it's going to convert the position to a string. And then off of the velocity, remember this is color. Remember we have our particle color in there. So I'm going to drag the velocity into the text color. And we'll just move this out of the way. So we're getting our collision. We're going through our array. And then based on every hit, we're getting the position read into the screen and we're getting the color to change the text color on the screen. So let's go take a look at this. So I'm going to compile and save. And we'll just drag our blueprint out. Just pull it up a little bit. And let's just play and simulate. There we go. The position and the color. So we're seeing green, we're seeing some yellow. Another one, we're seeing another green. Yeah, this is cool. This is working. 
So now, if you wanted to add some bells and whistles, do some other interesting things, you can do that. So I'm gonna open up my Niagara emitter so I can make some changes. So I don't wanna base this on a gravity force anymore, so I'm gonna delete the gravity force. And instead, I want add velocity. Now my add velocity, I'm going to pull this above collision. And in here, the velocity, I wanna base this on the collision. I wanna base this on the collision, true or false. So this vector, if I click on this dropdown and I type in bull, we can convert this into a bull. So we're going to make one from the bull. So if it's true, it's gonna be this. If it's false, it's gonna be this. But this bull, I wanna base this on the collision, like I said before. And if I click on this dropdown and I type in collision, I'm not gonna see anything. And that's because these aren't in the correct order of operation. So if I pull add velocity below collision, and now I go to bull, and I look for collision, you'll see that that collision valid shows up. So before it collides, I want it to be random. And then when it does collide, I want it to be the opposite of that random. So I'm gonna to come to particle spawn and I'm gonna add a new set, set new or existing parameter. And in here, I'm gonna create a new vector. And I'll just call this, I'll just rename this false vector. And then I'm gonna change this to be a random vector. And that's all I need. So now if I come back to my add velocity, I'm gonna change the false vector to be our false vector that we just made. And then the true vector, I'm going to multiply vector. And B, I'm gonna change this to a float. But in A, I'm also going to put that false vector. And then I'm gonna multiply it by negative one. This way we're inverting that vector. Now let's save and I'll compile and I'll make sure that the Niagara system is also saved. So let's pull this out and see what we have. I'll just pull this up a little bit. For the spawn, goes back, goes back. It's a wall, gets stuck. That one hits a wall, gets stuck. hits and bounces. Cool. So this is working as intended. So now there's two more things I want to add here. I want to add light to this and I want to add an intensity to those lights. So I'm going to add a light render and that light render under color add we're going to make sure that the XYZ is actually set to 1 so it has some sort of value instead of nothing and we'll increase the radius scale. We'll set this to something like 4 and then in particle update, we're also going to add a scale color so that we can impact the light render. So scale alpha, we're gonna make this a curve so that our particles fade out over time. And then our scale RGB, I'm actually just gonna change this to be a float. And let's just set this to something high so that we can see the intensity. We'll set it to something like 300. And we'll save that. And we'll make sure that our Niagara system saved. We'll make sure our blueprint's out there. And you can see that these lights are working, right? Just set like that, which is pretty cool. So now based on those collision hits, I wanna drive the intensity of these lights, of the emissive and the lights. So before I do that, I think I actually want to increase the radius a little bit more. I'll set it to something like six. I'll save that, save our Niagara system. Just double check that, just a little bit bigger. And let's go take a look at our Niagara system now, because I want to add one more user parameter for us to drive that intensity. So in scale color, we're going to change this value to be our intensity. So our user parameter, we're going to add a new float. And that float, I'm going to rename to call int. And we'll set the default to be one. And now in our scale color, we're going to set that scale RGB value as a float to be our coal int, and I'll save it, because now we're gonna go set that up in our blueprint. So instead of using any of this, we don't have to use any of this for this example. So based off of our collision hit, we're going to set a Niagara parameter. So we get a reference to our Niagara system, and then we're going to type in set, and we're looking for set Niagara variable by string float. And this is going to be the parameter that we just made. This is gonna be user, dot 
col int or whatever you called it based on our hit. So what I want to do is every time we hit, I want to flip flop. I want to change the intensity. I want to increase it and then decrease it. So we're in value. We need a start and we need an end. So I'm going to add a new variable and I'm going to name this in start and I'm going to change this to be a float and then I'm going to duplicate this and this is going to be our in end and I'll just compile this and my start I'm going to set this to be one and then our in end I'm going to set this to be crazy it's going to be something like 600 and now we want to drag out and we want to get each one of these so we have our so we have our start and now we have our end and now I want to lerp between these two so off of this I'm going to look for a lerp I'll put the start into A and into B. So now zero is going to be the start. And if this is one, it's going to be the end. So now we just need something to drive this. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to go all the way down. We're looking for add a timeline. And now you can call this whatever you want. I'm going to call it curve up. And then I'm going to double click on this. Now in here, we want to add a float track. This is what's going to drive that alpha. So you can call it whatever you want, alpha drive. And now I'm going to add two keys. So I'm going to right click, add key, and this first one is going to be time zero, value zero. And then because our length is set to five seconds, I'm going to right click and add a key. And that time is going to be five seconds, and the value is going to be one. And as a matter of fact, we could actually decrease this. So let's set the time to be three. And we'll make sure that we set graph length to be three as well. So now back in our event graph, we should have that alpha drive. And this is what's going to drive the alpha. And then this is going to be the in value. Now, like I said, every time we have a collision hit, I want it to alternate between increasing and decreasing. So off of this, event receive particle every time we collide I'm gonna look for flip-flop so the first time something hits it's going to play and the next time it hits it's going to reverse it and then we're gonna do our timeline and then this is going to update our Niagara variable and that's going to be driven by the timeline from our start to end so let's go take a look at what we have so I'm gonna compile and save and now we will go play and simulate so we can see what's going on. See, this one isn't going to collide. Actually, let's go and increase our spawn rate first. So in our Niagara emitter, we're going to do our spawn rate. And we'll set this to be something like 0 uh, 0.7. Let's do 0 0.7. So you can see the hit. Their intensity is increasing. Their intensity is increasing. And over time, randomly, the intensity will decrease or it'll increase. So yeah, this is cool. This isn't the most amazing, but it does get the idea across of what you can do with exporting the particle data. So if you guys thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks guys.